filling up for a trip through time to unravel the mysteries of one of history's legendary sites. Welcome to Discover, Learn, Travel. Join me today as we dive into the incredible world of the Roman Colosseum. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to join our community of curious minds. The Pope and Todd Shoes teamed up to restore the Colosseum in Rome. They wanted to fix up the ancient landmark which was getting worn out from pollution and weather. Todd's, a famous Italian shoe company, paid for the project. Skilled workers cleaned and repaired the Colosseum, making it look as grand as it did centuries ago. Their teamwork showed how people can work together to protect important historical places for the future. In the past, people used the Colosseum in Rome as a giant stone store. After the Romans stopped using it for big events, the Colosseum just sat there, getting old and forgotten. Then during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, when Rome was being built again, people started taking pieces of the Colosseum to use in other buildings. They thought, why find new rocks when there are perfectly good ones right here? So brick by brick, the Colosseum got picked apart. Imagine artists and builders rummaging through it like a giant Lego set, taking whatever pieces they needed. They went on for centuries until there wasn't much left of the Colosseum's original grandeur. Even though people aren't taking pieces from it anymore, the damage was already done. The Colosseum still stands, but it's like a ghost of its former self, missing big chunks. It's a reminder of how important it is to protect our history, even when it's made of rocks and stones. The event that ended the game shook up the whole sports world. It started normally with athletes from everywhere getting ready to compete. But as the games went on, weird things started happening. Then one day, a huge burst of energy came out of the main stadium. It destroyed everything around it. People screamed and the ground shook. Athletes couldn't do anything about it. After it was over, everything was a mess. The stadiums were destroyed and people talk about seeing strange things. The government tried to clean it up but some said there were still weird things going on. The event that ended the games didn't just stop the games. It made everyone realize how small we are in the universe. Even though the games might not happen again like before, people will always remember that crazy day. Women were gladiators in ancient Rome. They fought in the arena just like men did. Some were slaves, forced to fight, while others chose to do it for fame or freedom. They trained hard to become skilled fighters and entertain the crowds. One famous female gladiator was Flama. She was brave and skilled, and people admired her. But not everyone liked the idea of women fighting in the arena. Some thought it was wrong and went against women were supposed to do. Despite the controversy, women gladiators were popular. They showed that women could be strong and brave too. Their stories help us understand more about the roles of women in ancient Rome. The Colosseum wasn't just about gladiator fights. It hosted all sorts of exciting events that kept the crowds coming back for more. Besides the epic battles between warriors, some amazing plays and concerts showcased the talents of actors and musicians right in the heart of the massive arena. Imagine sitting in the stands, surrounded by the towering walls, and being swept away by the drama unfolding before your eyes. And it wasn't just humans who took center stage. The Colosseum also saw thrilling animal hunts, where wild beasts from far-off lands clashed in fierce combat and were chased down by skilled hunters. These events weren't just about fun though. They were also a way for the ruling elite to show off their power and dominance. Throughout history, 
People have often depicted Christians being martyred in arenas or coliseums, symbolizing unwavering faith and dedication. However, scholars have found that the reality is more complex. While Christians did face persecution under Roman rule, not as many were systematically martyred in arenas as some may think. Movies, books, and art often show Christians being thrown to lions or forced into gladiatorial combat, but these depictions can exaggerate the scale of martyrdom in such settings. In truth, while some Christians did face persecution, including martyrdom, the number who died in arenas may have been small compared to the total Christian population at the time. Also, not all Christians suffered extreme punishment with many facing social or economic difficulties instead. These elevators weren't for people going to different floors like modern ones. Instead, they were used to lift gladiators, animals, and scenery from underground up to the main stage. Underneath the arena, there was a whole secret world called the Hypogeum. It was like a maze of tunnels where gladiators and animals waited before their big fight. The elevators were down there too. Picture a team of workers pulling ropes and using pulleys to operate these elevators. They were like the movers of the ancient world, making sure everything and everyone got where they needed to be for the show. These elevators weren't just for bringing fighters and props up to the arena. They also helped to quickly take away anyone who got hurt or didn't make it out alive. Actually, the Colosseum in Rome didn't have a dome. It was an open-air amphitheater known for its massive size and elliptical shape. Built in the 1st century AD, it could hold up to 80,000 spectators who would come to watch gladiatorial contests, animal hunts, and other public spectacles. While the Colosseum had a complex system of awnings called the Velarium to provide shade for the audience, there was no dome covering the entire structure. The misconception of a dome might stem from confusion with other ancient Roman buildings, such as the Pantheon, which does have a large dome. Colosseum, that famous symbol of ancient Rome, didn't just host gladiator fights. It also put on fake sea battles, called Numachiae. These battles were super cool and showed off Rome's power and love for big, over-the-top entertainment. To make these battles happen, they'd flood the Colosseum, turning it into a giant pool. Then they'd bring in ships and sailors to act out epic naval fights. People loved these shows. They were like watching a blockbuster movie today. But they weren't just for fun. They also celebrated Rome's victories at sea and how awesome Rome's navy was. But as exciting as these battles were, they also had a dark side. They took a ton of resources and made violence seem normal. Still, for the people of ancient Rome, these shows were the highlight of the year, a chance to escape into the glory of their empire. Even today, we're still fascinated by these ancient spectacles, imagining what it must have been like to witness them firsthand. The main structure doesn't use any concrete. Instead, it's made with cool new materials that are good for the environment. They use wood from special forest and strong stuff called composites to build it. It's all about being modern and eco-friendly while still looking awesome. This building shows that you can build big without messing up the planet. From its awe-inspiring architecture to its rich history of spectacle and entertainment, the Colosseum continues to captivate hearts and minds across the ages. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting adventures around the world. Join us next time as we travel on another thrilling expedition.